It's a sin to hide behind this heartache To make believe that I've found someone new It's a sin to say that I don't miss you When people know I'm still in love with you then he lost his master's army to a tribe called NCR, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. Well, I can only visually confirm the burned part, and even that's an extrapolation. I'm not brave enough to try and see what's under the bandages. No, it's the changed part that concerns me. Do you remember what it was like before all this? Only a little. I was very young. He was... different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. And that didn't give you room for pause. I would have thought you guys would listen to your instincts. By the time the Legion's true colors became obvious, it would have been too late. Well, I guess the war with the NCR was perfect timing in that case. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Did he tell you that, or was that just a gut feeling? Fuck me, that is a long drop. Great if you want to practice synchronized diving, though. Look, I want to believe that a man like him can change. I really do. I'm just not convinced it's possible. You don't know this, but I'm on a similar journey myself. I did some questionable things when I was in the Mojave. Nothing close to what Joshua did with the Legion, you understand, but I still put people in unnecessary danger. I'm trying to change my ways, but even now, I can feel the same instincts tugging at me. If I don't pay attention, I'm going to slip right back into my old self. I just know it. And that's a problem, because right now, I need to pay more attention to this thing. Hey there, you. I am not a threat. A dickhead, perhaps, but not a threat. I'm just going to very slowly and casually walk by you. No need for alarm. That's it. Anyway, I'm not trying to stir up anything between you and Joshua. I just want to give you an outside perspective. You can make up your own mind afterwards. But suffice to say, I am very alarmed by the whole head on pike thing. That is a classic Legion tactic. He's tapping into a very dark part of his mind, and he might not even realize it. Uh, although I guess it's not fair for me to judge. He got set on fire and pushed off a cliff. I assume that's a little bit more traumatic than what I went through. Kaisar really needed a scapegoat for losing at Hoover Dam. Oh boy. This is a little awkward. I swear to god, if you panic and ram me off this bridge, I'm going to be a little upset. If I survive that, then the tribe is gonna be eating big horner steaks for dinner tonight. Yeah, oh, don't you fucking do it. That's it. Live and let live, motherfucker. See, if more people held that view, then this world would be a very different place. I can only hope that's what Joshua learned after getting his backside handed to him at Hoover Dam. How can two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam? Oh, my dear boy, you have no idea what civilized people will fight over. You know the bottle caps I'm carrying? Well, some of these have stars on the bottom. Now, I once saw two people try to kill each other just for these special caps. It's a little more complicated than that, but not by much. If that's what you call civilized, then your tribe would be the peak of humanity. <laughs> now, you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better. That I should stay here and forget the outside world. Which is ironic, because the Legion spent most of his time destroying that kind of life. Now, I wouldn't say it's better, it's just different. And in some ways, it's more honest. But to answer your question, we're not talking about a dam that you can build out of locks and boulders. Hoover Dam is fucking massive. We're talking about something that's taller and wider than some of these mountains. <laughs> really? That's... my gods. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. Oh yeah, they were civilized all right. And guess what happened? They killed themselves with nuclear fire. So what does that tell you? Joshua keeps saying it isn't paradise out there. But how can it not be, compared to this? What the hell are you talking about? This is paradise, Chalk, not the wasteland. You can't even step into a puddle without getting irradiated out there. Are, are we talking about the same thing? 
I mean the lands beyond the valley. The place where the cities never fell. Where people don't live in tribes and forage just to survive. Okay, you're talking about something a bit more specific than just beyond the valley. Because let me tell you, there are plenty of people in the Mojave who really do need to forage just to survive. In fact, depending on where you are, that might not even be an option. I don't remember seeing anything edible growing in Freeside. So the beggars there have to do exactly what the name implies. They have to beg. And everyone else have their own problems. Wait, did something just move? Oh my god, is that a big hoarder calf? How the hell did you get lost? Just go back the way you came, you fucking idiot! Remind me not to get you mad at me. Only if you do something this stupid. I mean, okay, this valley is a little out of the way, but holy shit, it's a dead end. There's nowhere else to go. How long is it gonna be before another one gets lost in here? I'm starting to think that maybe the other hunters had a good reason not to worry. This kind of shit probably happens every other week. Chances are, it'll find its own way out soon. But you know what? Just to keep you happy, I'll go the extra mile and lead it out of here. Come on there, you bitch. Like the shadow of a ghost. No, they're called Chupacabras, Chalk, and pray you'll never meet one. Alright, listen, you little fuck. You're gonna eat this and follow me, or I swear to god, I will eat you instead. Oh, don't you point your horns at me, little one. I'm the grown-up here, so I make the rules, got it? Now, eat this. Yeah, you like that? More where that came from, so you better follow me. Come on. I've got more. You dumb fuck. Okay, there we go. Now, let me show you the weird and wonderful trick of backtracking. I swear to god, when I find your mother, if she doesn't give you a good stern talking to, then I will. You have any idea how worried sick the rest of the herd is? They were about to go all the way down to the valley to find you, and here you were without a care in the world. Now, go and apologize to your mother. Uh, oh, um... Uh, Ma'am, is this not your child? Well, shit. How am I supposed to know which one this kid belongs to? No offense, but they're not exactly wearing ID tags. Chalk, any suggestions? Hmm. Yes? You're supposed to be the knowledgeable one here. You didn't think this far ahead, did you? Lead on. I'll follow. Oh, thanks for that. Now I know why follows is part of your name. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, excuse me, ma'am? I, oh, I mean, sir, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, is this your child by any chance? It, it's not, is it? God damn it. And now we have to get this thing across this chasm. There's no way this won't end well. Uh, it, is it still following me? Hey, get over here, you lazy piece of shit. Unless, is that your parent? Hey, I thought this kid isn't yours. All right, all right, I'll back off. Holy shit. Try to be a good Samaritan here. Alright, what's your problem? You want more food, is that it? Here, you greedy little shit, now follow me! Alright, we're going, okay? Damn, I don't need a permit, this ain't private property! The whoa, whoa, slow down! Now, be very careful crossing this. It's very steep, and you are very heavy. I refuse to be held responsible if you slip, so don't slip! Now then, is this your mother? Seriously, it's getting a little ridiculous. Maybe your herd is actively trying to get rid of you. Judging by your behavior so far, I'm not even remotely surprised. Hello, sir or madam. Is this by any chance your child? And if not, can you please point us in the right direction? The Calf Protection Agency appreciates your cooperation. Or like they're off. Alright, alright, we're leaving now. This neighborhood is fucking hostile. It's no place to raise a child. I bet your kid likes to piss in the drinking water for fun. That's what happens when it's raised by the likes of you. Come on, Rami. That's what I'm gonna call you from now on. We don't need to associate ourselves with this family. What? What's that supposed to mean? Do you know them? Well, they can explain to your parents why they refuse to help you. Uh, why are you stopping again? Oh, don't tell me. You want to eat again, huh? You greedy little... Here! You're gonna put on so much weight. Now then, let's burn some of that off. Come on. <sighs> this is all for you, Chuck. No, no, this way. Uh, you're not deaf. Stop pretending. I swear to God, if it turns out Rami's mother isn't even here anymore, I'm just gonna throw all of the banana yuca in my pocket at one of these other big hoarders and make a run for it. What happens next is none of my business. I tried already. I mean, look at this. If you didn't know any better, you'd think we're trying to lure Rami away from the herd. It's just as well they don't give a shit, otherwise we would be under attack by now. Anyway, we're getting really close to where we started, so... If that one isn't Rami's mother, then there's literally no one else left. Now that I think about it, you said your tribe hunt these things, right? 
Is it possible that you already killed the mother without realizing it? I guess it would be unavoidable, unless you guys can literally recognize every single one of these things, and by you guys I am not including you, that sooner or later you're gonna end up creating a very upset widow or an orphaned child. I hope you're proud of yourselves. Now then, hello sir or madam, please tell me this is your child, if not, then I will literally pay you to take them off my hands. Okay, you're not threatening to kill me, and Rami stopped following me again. I'm just gonna assume that you two are related, no need to show me a birth certificate, I won't be able to verify it anyway. Well, goodbye Rami, hope you don't end up on the spit roast, because I can't promise I won't take a bite. Yeah... You know, honestly, Chalk, outside this canyon, there are plenty of people who have to hunt and manage big hoarders, just like you. So, really, it's not as different out there as you think. What you were describing earlier sounds a lot more like New Vegas, or maybe areas under NCR control where some form of law and order exists. But even then, calling it paradise is pushing it. Ooh, I can see a taboo cave. Guess where I'm going next? Anyway... I get the feeling you have a very idyllic impression of what the outside world is like. Where did you get that from? Let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, a man came through the valley with one of the caravans. Tall man, big mustache, carried a guitar. Mustache and guitar? Ha! <laughs> what are the odds? I asked what he did for his living, and the interpreter told me he was a singer. Oh wow, seriously, what are the odds? What is that? I asked. The man explained that he went from place to place and sang for people, who gave him food and shelter and care in return. I couldn't believe that there was a place in this world where a man could do that. I promised myself then that one day I'd explore that world myself. So let me get this straight. You met one guy from outside who told you one aspect about where he's from, and that was enough for you to start fantasizing about this outside world? And not only that, you want to leave everything behind and actually go there? Wow. And you have an admittedly very charismatic, but also very religious man for a chief. Oh, the red flags, I can see them again. Damn it, I don't want to influence you, Chalk, but you're not making it easy. Look, uh, does anyone know about your intentions? Have you at least told Joshua about this? I, um, I haven't told him yet. Never had the growins. Oh yeah? Why? Because you know he would immediately slap that idea out of you? You ever think that maybe there's a good reason for that? Uh, maybe you should tell him, just so he can hear what he has to say. It might open your eyes a little. Hell, if you're that scared, I'll talk to him and relay the message. That way I can augment it with my own experience. You'd do that? Sure. Sounds smart to me. He might not get so mad at you. No, but the two of us might just get even madder at you, like a positive feedback loop. Anyway, why the hell did you mark the side of a wall? Oh, don't tell me it's an underwater cave. I left my rebreather behind, goddammit. Good thing I don't feel wet enough yet. I like how this is right outside your camp too, like it's taunting you. Well, you better hold on tight to that baseball cap or you're gonna lose it. Here we go. <gasps> Whew, that woke me up. Whoa, Chalk! What is that? You are inches away from a tripwire. Do not move. Pretend you are a tree or something. Good lord, I don't know what this is connected to and I don't care. This is one seriously crafty chupacabra. Well, whoever set that up, know that I have both worked with and killed chupacabras before, so I know all your tricks. At least in this case, we know we're not dealing with supernatural spirits. Last time I checked, you have to be tangible to set up a tripwire. But it's understandable. I mean, if you saw one of your friends go inside this place followed by a loud noise and they never came back out, your imagination would take you to all kinds of places. I mean, I wouldn't think spirits, but- OH SHIT! BACK THE FUCK UP! <clears throat> Whoa, ho ho. You okay there, Chalk? After handing to this chupacabra, that nearly got me. See, this is why a landmine should be buried underground, not just laid out on the surface. See, that one wasn't quite as well hidden, but the giant mushroom certainly helped. Someone really doesn't want us to explore this cave, which is ironic because now I just want to push on even further. I mean, you don't make this kind of effort if there's nothing worth protecting. I guess being sneaky is pointless now. If anyone's still in here, they definitely would have heard that explosion. Still, I expect at least two or three more traps along the way. Speaking of which... Wow, that really does blend into the ground from a certain angle. You need to know what you're looking for to spot that. Fortunately, I have plenty of experience in this field. 
for legitimate reasons and otherwise. Look, the point is, the loot at the end usually justifies the hassle. Right next to a fire extinguisher. Oh, and this is what happens when you're not careful. Ooh, that's not one of your people, is it? They were holding a laser pistol, so I assume the answer is no. I guess this could be the guy who set all this up. It's always deliciously ironic when someone accidentally sets off their own traps. In that case, I have no sympathy whatsoever. You're supposed to set the traps furthest in first and move backwards, otherwise you'll corner yourself. I guess that could have been an intruder and that the mysterious trapper simply reset the tripwire, but if that's the case, did they really leave that corpse there to rot all this time? Ooh, somebody is or was living down here. Well. Take a good look, Chalk. No ghosts, no spirits. Only humanity. Whoever this is made it a right pain in the neck for themselves to get in and out of their own home. Oh wow, that is just sick. Come on, a teddy bear? I don't know what kind of afterlife you believe in, but you're gonna have a lot of explaining to do in front of the gatekeeper. Okay, we've breached your defenses, so if you're going to surrender, now will be the time. Otherwise, we're just going to start looting. I guess we'll start looting then. Then again, maybe there's no one left to answer. I can't really tell if anyone's been here recently. The terminal is on, but the ones inside the vaults were left on too, so that doesn't really mean anything. Okay, Chalk, do me a favor and keep an eye out. I'm gonna see if I can figure anything out here. Sure. Okay. 2077? That was the year the whole world got a bit toasty. If this is the journal of whoever lived here, they either became ghouls or they're long dead by now. October 28th. Ooh, less than a week after the bombs fell. Five days on foot, still can't sleep. Outside is like nothing happened. Sky looks wrong, that's all. Well, I'm not surprised. This valley is beautiful and all, but it was hardly a prime target. Hike back to overturned Natgar truck near Tolkerville? After Blister's Hill, maybe. Looks like USGS team was researching something here in cave. Cleared out when bombs fell. Left equipment behind. Probably thought they had families to run back to. Yeah... It would have been safer to stick around, but if everything you cared about is back home, then what's the point? October 29th. Char. Must have said this out loud a thousand times walking here. Maybe writing it will feel more like you heard. You were right. I was north of Spanish Fork. Took the 77 along Provo Bay to stay clear of town. Would have been home in an hour. Engine died. Truck just stopped. So did the Chrysler in the other lane. Knew right away. Oh boy. Yeah, EMP would have been the only warning most people had. This is why they should have stuck with bicycles. First nuke hit SLC inside a minute. I was looking south. Lucky man. Flash behind me so bright world looked on fire. Old couple. From the Chrysler start screaming they can't see. Yikes. Nuclear flash. Any closer and their eyes would have melted. Yeah, we're so fixated on radiation these days, it's easy to forget about all the other dozens of ways you could die horribly from nuclear war. Didn't watch you die, Char. Saved my eyes. Counted 12 more flashes next 7 minutes. Ground shook each time, 18 seconds later. With nothing hit for half an hour, took a look. Global fire where you and Alex died. Didn't kid myself. Didn't know what to do. Grabbed my pack and rifle. Saw to the old couple. Sat them up against car. Let them hold and comfort each other. Oh, I think I know how this is going to end. Told them I was going to get help. Everything be okay. One bullet through both heads. Instant. Yep, figured as much. That's, uh, not really what I was hoping for. Hate to say this, Chalk, but that was definitely for the best. There's no way this guy could have actually helped them if they were really blinded. There wouldn't have been any medical facilities left standing. At least this way, they wouldn't have suffered any further. Five day hike back to Zion. You told me. Stop running off to the wild. Man belongs with his family. <sighs> Damn, lady. At least he had a family to stay with. Not all of us are that lucky. You were right. You were right. You were right. You were right. Wasn't there to hold you and my boy. Died without me. Never touch you or him again. Should shoot myself. What I deserve. Holy shit, dude. Get a hold of yourself. I get it. You weren't there when they died. You think you let them down. But spare a thought for the thousands of American soldiers stationed in China when the bombs fell. They would have been stranded over there. Virtually every single survivor lost someone that day. I like to think your wife and your son would have wanted you to live on. Can't. Maybe soon. October 31st. Black rain falling outside. Ooh, that is very bad. 
That would have been the dust sucked up from the ground burst coming back down in the rain. Good thing he found this cave, because there's no crawling out through that fallout. Geiger jumping. Should let it kill me by bottling water from back of the cave all the same. November 2nd. Sounds dead outside, but can't look. Geiger goes crazy 15 feet from cave mouth. Do the maths. Radiation goes down before water runs out or I'd never leave this cave. Well, he made it to the following year at least, but with the benefit of hindsight, we know his problems have just begun. January 1st. Happy New Year. Two months in cave. Still lethal outside. Don't get it. In army they said two to four weeks cleared fallout. Well, clearly the army lied, or they didn't know shit. I'm hoping it was the latter, because if any half-decent human being knew what kind of hell they would unleash, they would have done everything possible to prevent it. Less than a month's water left, been mopping condensation off cave walls, wringing shirt into bottles, trading calories for H2O, food stocks holding, thanks USGS. If there was even a chance I'd see the two of you again, I'd run outside. January 10th. Sounded like windstorm out there for two days. Radiation down 500. What happened? Well, if I have to guess, I would say the storm finally cleared the fallout in the atmosphere. That's small comfort, because God knows how badly contaminated the soil was by this point. January 15th. Took a peek. Snow. It glows green. Okay, never mind. Bad shit was still in the air. January 28th. Radiation low enough I could risk short exposure outside. More important, cave stream now drinkable if I use rat drugs. January 30th. There's nothing alive out there. Well, I guess that was the end of his story. There's no way he could have replenished his food supply, so I guess that corpse back there was his all along. Poor bastard. But he'd lasted longer than most. I guess now we should honor his memory. By taking his shit. For the greater good, obviously. And he said he found the Pip-Boy in Zion, which is also frankly ludicrous. I mean, this is a safe place to hide a vault, sure. But something tells me your scouts would have found it a long time ago and made it the mother of all taboo places. Yeah. Your scouts. You're not even listening, are you? Well, fair enough, I guess. Let's cut the bullshit. What can I do for you? Well, first things first. These tribals. I get the feeling most of them don't actually speak our language. At least, not well enough to understand much beyond hello, goodbye, and fuck off. Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own languages. Take the dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez, and a language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. I was a translator years ago, but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variations. In that case, while I have follows Chalk offloading the stuff we found in that cave, this is about as private a conversation as we can get. So, you're really the chief of this tribe now, are you? I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the Dead Horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is a spiritual leader and main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. In other words, this is supposed to be a temporary arrangement? <laughs> Forgive me if I find that a little dubious. Well, if I am speaking to the undisputed chief of the dead horses, acting or otherwise, then can I at least assume you know the lay of the land? What can you tell me about the tribes in this area? A great deal. There are three, make that four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. In the Narrows, the Sorrows. And finally, there's Daniel and myself. We're new Canaanites. Really? You describe your people as a tribe? Considering your past affiliations, that kind of thinking would have gotten you on the cross. We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology. But we're still a tribe. A linked family of families. The Boneyard, Phoenix, New Vegas, they're just places, metal and stone. New Canaan dies, but the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down, when you lose everything you have, you always have family. And your family always has tribe. 
Well, if you want to be philosophical about it, then sure. But in practice, when you say the word tribal, most people wouldn't have your kind in mind. I think there's quite a gap between yourself and, say, the white legs. We can argue about semantics until the end of time, but personally, I define the word tribal as a sliding scale based on how likely they would club me in the back of the head for no reason. So, needless to say, the white legs is about as tribal as you can get in my book. I mean, the caravan literally did nothing to provoke them, and this isn't even their land to begin with, so you could hardly call us trespassers. They attack everyone who isn't a white leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. But as for why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out. All of us. They want to join Caesar's legion and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites, and everyone we shelter. Oh yes, hence why even the Death Horses and the Sorrows aren't safe either. Not that the White Legs wouldn't attack them regardless. They're invaders, or at least that's where they're trying to be, and this is fertile land. They clearly don't give a shit if this valley already belongs to someone else. Although, based on what Follows Chalk told me, apparently that's not the Dead Horses either. The valley belongs to God, but no. The Dead Horses live at Dead Horse Point up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. Before I returned to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I looked much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons and pre-war equipment. When I returned, they showed their appreciation. By uprooting themselves from their home? And all because you asked them to? Wow. Well, I admire their devotion, if nothing else. Those must have been some chunky big hornets they caught thanks to you. But in all seriousness, you guys are technically outsiders in a strange land too? Well, holy shit, you're really leaving your marks around here, aren't you? I can't go five minutes without seeing one of your wall paintings. I guess the Sorrows must have been here first. Can't imagine they would be too happy with their home getting covered in paintings from outsiders. That said, they must be keeping a low profile. I haven't seen any of them yet. The Sorrows have many skilled hunters among them but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. Even though they can hunt a full-grown Yaogwai, they don't know how to deal with the White Legs. That's why we're here. Is that really why, though? For yourself, I mean. You put in all this effort and relocated an entire tribe just to help out a completely different tribe for nothing in return? Especially when your own people are still struggling from their own catastrophe? What's your angle here? Oh, don't look at me like that. We're both men with things to hide. That's one thing we have in common. You don't need to worry about me stirring shit up. I've made that mistake before, and I'm still paying for it. Whatever agenda you're pursuing here, I won't intervene. But old habits die hard. So at the very least, I want to satisfy my own curiosity. I already know your people are preachers of an ancient religion. Therefore, I naturally have to wonder if you have some ulterior motives. So, from one sinner to another... Why are you here? What are you preaching exactly? I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. Start others on the path of salvation, implying that they're lost without your guidance. Still, you're not a grifter, are you? I get the feeling you actually believe in the stuff you're preaching. I know it may be hard for you to accept or even to understand. In my heart, I believe that though I am a sinner, I have been saved. And I believe there is something beyond this rock, and this air, and this water around us. Something more that is waiting for us. I have been baptized twice. Once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside until I stand before my Lord for judgment. Well, that's only the hypothetical future, but guess what? In the here and now, you're already being judged by the people around you. And in turn, I'm sure you're judging me too. In which case, here's something for you to chew on. 
Perhaps I do believe, Graham, but with very different interpretations, ones you may not like. And that makes me wonder if these lost souls around us also hold interpretations you don't like, or hell, if they don't respond well to your preaching at all. What then? Is conversion a prerequisite to gaining your protection? That topic is off limits, I assume. I guess you haven't had to contemplate that yet. But, like I said, I'm not here to intervene. I'm just a courier, after all. Speaking of which, I have a message I need to share with you. Our boy Follows Chalk wants to leave the valley and explore the outside world. I assume you know about this already? I thought he might. It's been some time since I've visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him? You don't want to further influence him? Even though you're actively preaching your religion to these people? No offense, but I think you need to make up your mind. But anyway, you think he needs my advice? Oh boy, he really doesn't. And what makes you think I have fond memories of civilized places? I'm not here by accident, I just left one behind. Then let him know. Follows Chalk needs more guidance in his life. I'd prefer it not come from me. If people want to look to me for how to fight, I will show them how. I believe God put me on this earth for that very reason. But to live like me, think like me. No. There are better people for them to look to for such things. Wait, what? You're not trying to teach them how to think like you? That's not how this is supposed to work. I, I mean... Whether you realize it or not, you are teaching them how to think, just by being in this position, but... I'm used to leaders who embrace spreading their own philosophy. Leaders who bask in their own magnificence. You are very strange, Graham. Anyway, for my part, I don't think I know Chalk well enough to give him anything close to good guidance yet. But, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I say I'm just a courier, but... I haven't exactly been acting like one, if I'm honest. I've built a reputation in the Mojave, and now it's too late to wind the clock back. I can only assume you haven't been keeping tabs on what's happening over there. The way you keep talking about Caesar and the Legion gives it away. Although, you said you were expecting a different courier from the Mojave. What's that about? Caesar would never admit this openly. But he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. But maybe this one survived. Well, that's the exact opposite of who I am. Or, who I was. I like to think I'm pretty high on the Legion's shit list right now. And for what it's worth, you won't need to worry about Caesar sending any more people. He was so obsessed with assassinating you that he forgot to watch his own back. And I made sure he doesn't have one anymore. And before you ask, no, I didn't take any pictures. Don't be disgusted. I have to admit, it's hard to believe. That even after all he did to me, all he tried to do to find and erase me from this world, he went first. No doubt this will be good for the Mojave. I can only hope Arizona and the tribes don't suffer as the Legion falls apart around them. I really don't see how they'll be worse off than they already are. Besides, it's not completely over yet. We killed as many legionaries as we could find in his camp, but his new legate wasn't there. No doubt he's leading the legion now. I think only Caesar can lead the legion. I've never met anyone who could take his place. I couldn't. I never had a mind for logistics. I don't know, Laneus, but from what I've heard, he has no interest in leading anyone, unless it's in battle. No. The legion dies with Caesar. What follows now are just the last steps of a man who does not yet realize that he's walking dead. But as long as he can still walk, he's dangerous to everything around him. Besides, that's ironic coming from a man like you. A man who by all accounts should be dead. And yet, here you are, alive and kicking, haunting the nightmares of your enemies. I guess that's something else we have in common. I survived two bullets in the head, by the way. And no, I'm not trying to turn this into a dick-waving contest. Frankly, with luck like ours, we can probably bankrupt all the casinos in Vegas between us in a weekend. <laughs>